Welcome to the ship room. You're on the air. The Finnish people are well known for two things. Consistently being ranked the happiest country in the world and very rarely smiling. So I'll do my best today to try to keep a straight face with today's guest, the CEO of Finland's most famous company, Nokia, Ursula Sorich Renier. Thanks for being here. You're very welcome. It's so good to spend some time Great with you. Here. You are the CIO of a tech company. That brings unique challenges. Yeah, it is interesting because you have also 100,000 people that maybe know more than you <laughs> do they about they do. your job, yeah. Yeah. right? Or would like to do it differently. You know what, for me, actually, I think it's a fascinating job. As CIO, you, you cannot just push technology. And you need to see this in an end-to-end -end perspective, what you can do in and with the organization. The work on a daily basis is very much dominated by video conferencing. The immediate communication, but also seeing each other, working together in collaboration. So the collaboration suite is key for us. Nokia is one of the most famous companies in Finland. And while you're not Finnish yourself, I, knew you, I know you do spend a fair amount of time there. So we're gonna take a break for a minute and kind of see how your palate has been modified by, <laughs> by sampling some traditional Finnish delicacies. So the first one we're gonna try here, pork, do you know how to say that word? Pork canalatico. Okay. I don't know. It's traditionally eaten during the winter months and is, is, is based on carrots. I suggest you start out small. But it's not bad. No, I like it. Okay, so this next one is called Mami. Is that how you say that, you think? Oh, it's Mami. Mami? Okay. Traditionally baked in birch bark, this Finnish rye porridge is the definition of dark and mysterious. This looks really interesting. <laughs> now, 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 if it's full of chocolate, I, I, I'm all in here. Actually, it just tastes like, it, it tastes like you're eating um, of a gelatin with molasses in it. Oh, this one looks like it's a Hawaiian name. Kalakuko some little fish baked into a loaf of bread. I guess because you can. I don't know how to try it with the mustard or not, but. I guess you dip. These are the chicken nuggets <laughs> of Finland. <laughs> Your team is global. How important is collaboration and that ability to connect and specifically make yourself approachable and available to your team. Everywhere I go, I hold. Town halls, I, town was, watching, halls. I was watching a video you had, yeah. yeah. But town halls, you know what, it's very interesting because you need to have the different target environments. So you need to sit with your own IT employees because there it's about, you know what, what are the characteristics that we want to change in the IT organization? How do you approach business? How do you work? And this mindset of, I am fully accountable. I have my expertise coming together with the expertise of the function. And then we negotiate the best solution for the company where we as IT need to represent, you know what, it has to be integratable. It has to be maintainable. It has to be secure. And so this negotiation, I think that IT has to play a very active role because it is for many a black box and that black box to demystify it and say, you know what, we are the consultants. We help you through this. You want to reach that goal. I show you in our existing landscape how this can work best and then go step by step is something that is extremely important. You create a joint goal and then, you know what, you celebrate together, right? Exactly. You've probably never seen one of these before. This is, uh, like coming from a telecom company, you're gonna appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Brad. ship room. Who's on the team's phone today? Hello, Brad. Miss me. Hey, welcome back to the show. Long time no here. Oh look, the small talk part of our program is over. So let me get to the point. There have been nearly 30 biographies written about the incomparable Alexander Graham Bell. So many, in fact, that I am currently writing a biography about these biographies. I'm titling it, Stop Ringing That Bell. 
<laughs> In addition to inventing the telephone and the graphophone, Bell invented dozens of other groundbreaking things. So, Ursula, since Nokia now owns Bell Labs, I thought I could ask you a few questions. But I just got hit. That is pretty darn cool. Nokia Bell Labs is super cool. I'm going to read you a list of inventions, and you tell me which ones were created by the prolific Bell. Correct answers will get you a 20% discount on future tours of the lab, <laughs> as well as exclusive access to the notebook full of jokes he wrote about Thomas Edison. They're incredibly mean. Oh, okay. But believe me, he deserved it. Let's begin. You tell me, did Bell invent the following? The wireless telephone. Yes. Swivel chairs that can have the height adjusted up or down. Swivel chairs, no. He never sat down. He was too busy venting. The external combustion engine. No, 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 no. no. A hydrofoil boat that could travel 70 miles per hour across the water. No. Real. Wow. Amazing. The microwave and microwave popcorn. Popcorn, probably not, but a microwave could be. The metal detector. That could be. I say yes. You did quite well, Ursula. The inventuous AGB would be proud of you. You know, one of the things I hear from every leader I talk with is the war for talent. All of us are, are, are just struggling to find the right technical you know, expertise to help us push everything forward. How do you build the culture and build the opportunity that becomes that a, an attractor of talent? The war for talent is very, very real. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have the magic bullet. The biggest success is actually word of mouth. So if you create an organization where people, you know, have interesting work, where it is also fun and you can, so to say, bring yourself in, yep. you have the possibility to affect change that becomes contagious. But this is kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you create a positive spiral, actually. And that is culture, work atmosphere, content of job. Yeah. But it, it's, it's never, you know, it's never easy and it will be a search forever. Now, we talked about AI. Now, in the background here, the ship room has a, a, a learning bot that's been listening to our conversation and has come up with the 12 questions that most represented and most relevant of our conversation. Okay? Wow, okay. Now, to make things a little more interesting on this, we're gonna make the finished flag while we're answering the questions. <laughs> okay? All right, here, here's your weapon. Luckily, this is like the easiest flag in the world to make. So Nokia started as a pulp mill, now you do telecoms. Yes. Do you think, are you, are you guys still any good at pulp? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have nothing to do with uh, pulp and forestry anymore. We're up to 5G now. How many Gs are too many? <laughs> How many? <laughs> <laughs> so you have a master's degree in philosophy. <laughs> what do philosophy and IT have in common? Oh, I tell you so much. I often say that I actually use philosophy the most still because everything I learned at the Technical University in computer science is all outdated. If you ran over a Nokia 3310 in your car. Oh, it would still work. It would still work. Would the car be damaged? Maybe, but... <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Does the network make the dream work? You know what? I didn't hear you. <laughs> right, so Nokia is heavily invested in the Internet of Things. What percentage of those things are just cats and, you know, funny videos? Probably a significant <laughs> one. There are more than three million saunas in Finland. When you, when you became CIO, did you get a sauna in your office? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So if people want to learn more about Nokia or the work that you're doing, where would they go? They can go to the website, they yep. can email me, they you're can... You're on LinkedIn? Um, absolutely. Well, thank you for being here, Ursula. It's been a lot of fun. Thank I, you, I too. I love what you're doing, um, I, and I love how you think about culture, and I, and I love how you think about innovation. This is uh, Brad Anderson signing off of The Ship Room. We'll see you the next time. Who gets a gold star? Oh, that was a nice try. Yes! Ah, <laughs> uh, you got one. These actually turn out really well when they edit them. Oh, okay.